Hello everyone, welcome to week 8. Um, the topic we have is a process design, which is quite important, uh, is one of the most important component of the operations management, because the process design help how the uh, transformation of resources uh, can be um, carried out from input to output. Basically the idea is that the process uh, design uh, is the act of transforming any organization, not just the resources, but its vision, even its goal and objective, uh, into more uh, important achievable uh, organizational uh, set objective or goals because the process design focus on defining what the organization will do to achieve its financial or any other goals uh, and objective more appropriately. So when we say what exactly is process design, uh, process design in operation management is about the sequence of operations uh, activity or operational activity that would be performed on a set of input to get the desired output. That means the process design in any organization, either as a production organization, manufacturing or serviceization, uh, they take uh, the process design takes a set of input resources, resources which are then used to transform something into output of product or uh, or uh, or a service if it is the service organization. Though there are num number of categories of the process design that can be used to differentiate the type of process design uh, based on analytical, experimental, or procedural categories. Um, the process design in operation management, we know operation management is a broader uh, concept which has uh, to run the business day in, day out, uh, business as usual activities. So the uh, operation management has uh, important elements inside. So we know pro operation management uh, can be carried out with a strategy in place, operation strategy uh, for achieving its long-term objective and then the planning and control where we need to make the best or optimum use of resources and then we have to take care that how the customer uh, uh, the requirement for any business to look after customers, how that can be properly performed, and then uh, looking to applying different models, including lean synchronization, let's say just in time, total quality management for continuous improvement. However, design is another important um, component within operation management because in design, we are looking for a number of things that is the uh, elements of the operations for various activities and uh, that can cover uh, the product design, the um, service, if it's a service organization, how it's going to be designed, how we can provide quick and efficient services, what is the design of the services uh, and production, let's say, how is the manufacturing design, uh, processes of the technology, uh, job design for staff, uh, layout and uh, how the things can be uh, carried out in, let's say, if there's a manufacturing plant, uh, what is the right um, uh, layout design uh, according to the need of the business and supply chain management end to end, how it will be designed, what is the process. Uh, so the important part for any operation management team is to see the uh, appropriate uh, processes they are designed and they are developed and implemented accordingly. Because the objective of any organization is to provide a service and product which satisfy customer needs and their uh, its value for their money. So a product and service design is based on the customer feedback and requirement as of the uh, requirement of the market trend. So b process design is where the product is broken sometime in uh, in different parts, which further can be carried or uh, can be further studied to go in detail that how manufacturing or m production process can be redesigned uh, to make it more efficient. Same is the case in the serviceization. But you're looking uh, when we are looking into the nature and the purpose of the design, every time that uh, the organizations try to produce a good or they offer a service, they will do uh, this by looking to their processes if they are more aligned uh, and they're efficient. So the process will uh, be basically trying to the process design that how the resources will be utilized in the more appropriate manner. So we are looking to the product service and the process which develop them. Uh, they all have to be designed uh, with the with the common ground where they can affect the product design 
uh, because the process design can be directly uh, ap applicable on the service design. So instead of um, making a decision during the uh, process design, it is important to see what is the impact of the process design on the product design or the service de design and um, vice versa because the product design and service design can also have impact on the decision of the process design. So it is like uh, two-way traffic that you see that there is a common ground process design. Uh, either we are doing a business with a production, so a product design and process design, we have to see how they are going to be supportive and aligned to each other. And uh, the same in the case of service organization, how the service services can be designed, uh, how they can be uh, processed with different activities, and then what is the process design uh, for running that particular business. Uh, look into this graphical illustration. We can see here that the uh, product or service designing on one 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 uh, sphere, one circle, and then we have designing the processes on the uh, right side of the second sphere or the circle we have. When we see the design of product and services, they should be designed in such a way that they can be created effectively. However, the designing the processes, they should be then designed so that they can create all product and services which services which the organization operation is likely to introduce. However, the common ground, the area, the product and services design has an impact on the process design and the process design has impact on the same time on the design of the uh, service as well as the design of the product. So when we look to the uh, to differentiate the impact of the process design on the design of product in manufacturing or the design of service in servitization, uh, we know that the design of the product and the design of the processes that in a, let's say any manufacturing operations, there's overlapping area uh, the activities of the product as well as of the process design that are going to be quite beneficial, supportive, and aligned. However, the same we looked in the servitization for uh, design of the service, and we can also have a common area because in most service operation, the overlap uh, between the, uh, the service and process design is quite implicit in the nature of service. So it cannot be ex expressible uh, and you cannot even sometimes differentiate uh, the but the common ground which uh, can be supportive or they can overlap between service and process design. So what exactly uh, the design uh, when we think about the product or service? So we know concept is important and then package and going for the process uh, to understand the nature, uh, use and value of any service or product. That model can be applied, let's say, uh, if you want to s divide in different stages. So we have the idea uh, creating stage, the conceptual stage, we concept the gen that generate the concept for any product design or service design. And then we do screening to see which is the more appropriate concept or appropriate way to uh, design a product or any service. And then we evaluate uh, to choose the best one uh, for implementation and then we do the preliminary design for the product or we do the prototype uh, for or the service which is going to be then finalized and implemented. In concept generation, uh, the idea can come from customers, uh, formally through marketing activities uh, and even you can do research and surveys, li listening to the customers on a day in day out basis that is uh, going to be quite helpful to generate concept. Uh, idea can come from competitor because um, there are a number of examples that you see what the other competitors are doing better and then you can do reverse engineering and then redesign the process. Idea can come from the staff, they are involved in the operation and they can find how things can be done efficiently to avoid more time consuming processes. So how you can meet the uh, need of customers on daily basis and then you can carry out uh, research and development and development activities uh, and that's going to be also very helpful to generate 
ideas for uh, concept generation. So through brainstorming session, let's say uh, crowdsourcing and other feedback, we get all the ideas to filter, filter them. Uh, the ideation which help to get the best out of the selection and we choose uh, the best design for product as well as for uh, service. However, designing the product uh, or, or designing a service, uh, we should be design, designing the product or service in such a way that they can be created effectively or efficiently rather. However, when you're designing the process that produce the product that we have designed or the service. So first we design what kind of product we're gonna produce or what kind of service that's gonna be offered. Then it's then the important stage is that the process design that the product or that service will be offered or the product will be produced. So processes should be designed so they can create all product and services which the operation is likely to introduce. That is very important because the decision you make, so the decision taking during the design of the product or service will have an impact on the process design that produce this product or services uh, or vice versa. Now looking to uh, the different types that we can apply in the manufacturing organization or production organization and then in contrast we compare with the servicization. Uh, so what are the key process design? We can see this graphical illustration uh, from variety point of view and volume. So high variety, low volume or high volume, low variety, uh, if we take the example of manufacturing organization for manufacturing process design. So we have five types here. So we can see that the process for uh, the task and flow uh, from the uh, diverse nature of the product or to the um, repetitive nature or from the intermittent uh, to the continuous. So we are basically trying to see how the design of the process is going to be more appropriate depends on the nature of the business. So we can see here that the top uh, left of this uh, graphical illustration in the box, we have first option is the project processes, which comes down to the jobbing processes, badge, mass processing and continuous processing. So that's quite clear from this illustration. We're going to look more in detail in the next slide that it looks like the project process has very high variety, but maybe very low volume. However, in contrast, the bottom right of the uh, box, we can see continuous processes. They must be very high in volume, but very low in variety. So similarly, we look into the servicization, service organization, their design process. We can divide them in three main types, professional services, uh, service shops and mass services. And here again, if they are very high in variety with low uh, volume, that is basically professional services, very customized and tailored. But when you come to the uh, bottom right of the box, uh, we see in this graphical illustration, this high volume, very low uh, is the variety here. So it is similar services can be uh, provided and that's maybe the service is just optimized and then uh, even the machine can perform the same service uh, time and again with very less options of variety. Uh, and this can be further look into this graphical illustration in the manufacturing organization, for example. So you do project, uh, do you see the jobbing uh, to beige, mass and continuous? And we know the volume from left to right and then variety from bottom up. So if we put in this matrix project at the top, the variety is very high, but the volume is very low. For example, you are doing construction. How many people make house? So in life, maybe once or twice you make a house, but how many times you buy shoes? So this is maybe every month or quite frequently, or how many times you buy, let's say, um, chocolate or ice cream or any other product which you are consuming every day. So the, this is the difference that uh, the design of the process or the design of the product that we're gonna put in the category here, this production or manufacturing, uh, if this is something very customized, it is gonna be tailored. So if you order something, it's gonna be costly at the same time, but 
uh, uh, they're going to be time consuming, but it's going to be very few in number. There's a very niche market for such product. Uh, the next one is jobbing. We're going to talk more in detail that how we differentiate, for example, uh, the project from jobbing and then how we're going to move forward from, let's say, jobbing to beige and then mass as well as continuous production. Uh, for example, uh, we think about jobbing. So various processes are used in the manufacturing field. One of those processes known as jobbing processes, uh, which is one which uh, where resources are allocated to multiple projects at the same time. In the jobbing process, a high variety of the products are generally produced, but a lower volume. Uh, example of jobbing process include, let's say, bespoke teller and a pre uh, precision engineering product. So the precise niche product, for example, which is uh, more uh, in variety than the project, but still very low as compared to beige and other categories of the business production. So the example here, um, we can see that the product, a medium variety uh, with a medium volume can be a beige. The, for example, the use of beige process include uh, the vehicle component assembly or clothing uh, manufacturing, for example, if it is uh, coming to be more customized. When you go in beige, that is the more volume because beige processing is, uh, is the transaction in a group or a beige. Uh, so no um, user in, uh, a, a interaction is required when the beige processing is underway. Uh, this basically differentiates uh, beige processing from transaction processing because uh, it involves processing transaction uh, one at a time and require uh, sometimes user interaction when you are doing um, uh, in the different uh, processes of the transaction uh, during batch processing. The, the batch process generate a product, but the sequential processes need, uh, they don't need uh, necessary to generate a product. Uh, some example of the batch processes are beverage uh, processing, biotech product manufacturing, for example, uh, dairy uh, processing, food processing, pharmaceutical, uh, and some maybe, let's say, soap manufacturing. Uh, they are produced in a beige, and they are when started the process, so it continues uh, to complete. Uh, and then if you go for a further high volume uh, and very uh, low variation, then we go for mass production, which is quite industrial technique to produce large quantity of the, the small products and constant flow on the production line. And then if you look to the uh, mass one, that the bottom uh, right, continuous production, that is called, called sometimes continuous process or continuous flow process because the material, either um, they are in bulk, uh, if they are dry or uh, they, are, they, they are a liquid form, they are being processed at the continuous in motion, they're undergoing for chemical reaction or subject to mechani mechanical or heat treatment. For example, the refinery for oil uh, that has to be continuously producing or there is a, a need for certain product which produce uh, in the uh, high-tech uh, manufacturing plant which starts and works for days or months or uh, even non-stop for long term and they're producing continuously with a very high volume, uh, and maybe they are doing just single one product, very low variation. So the um, process that the project uh, we're looking here, there's a one-off complex, large-scale, high work content product, as especially made everyone uh, can see the every order is quite customized uh, because of the nature of this type of uh, process. Uh, and then, of course, it defines start and finish if it's just like a project. So you're going to be doing, let's say, construct construct a house or you make a building, for example, that is a, uh, or make a dam or any infrastructure. So that is a particular specific um, customized one-off activity to be completed. So this is very low volume. But the variety, every time you are doing it, is totally different thing. It's a different project. It's a different um, scope and it's a different uh, requirement so it also need different skills uh, to be completed or coordinated so it is a high-tech uh, 
let's say um, manufacturing, uh, technological innov innovation, uh, medical uh, treatment uh, discovery or research project or also let's say construction or development projects are some of the example for the project processes. Jobbing, we know they are uh, small uh, quantities, but they are more in variety than the project uh, nature of the processes. So they're one of or only few required, um, but more in volume than the project processes. They're specially made, again, they can be tailored, customized, because if you, let's say, go to order uh, a three-piece suit for yourself, so that will be a tailored one, customized, but ag again, it's gonna be time consuming and expensive. So we look into different uh, jobbing that can be processed uh, in, in, a, in a high scale, a uh, bit more in volume, uh, but with some alteration as per the individual customer need and requirement. Uh, again, it needs a broader uh, scope of skills, and then we need to complete with the whole product end by end. Uh, batch processing on the other end, it is uh, where we can see that uh, volume is high, but the low variety then as compared to the jobbing. Uh, the standard product, they repeat uh, repeating demand but can make sometimes special one as per the customer need and requirement. Uh, they are somewhere in between the continuation and project processes because they can be specialized and with the narrow, uh, narrower skills or uh, it can be sometime even for a niche customer market. So setup uh, change over at each stage of the production uh, may be required, uh, but when you compare with the mass uh, line of the processes, Again, that's a very high volume, uh, though the variation or the variety will decrease. As a standard repeat production, we call it runners, and that a low end as well as low skills or narrow skills can be required uh, to fulfill, and even robotics uh, can do with the automation. So no setup or almost instantaneous ones will be uh, more appropriate in the line or the production line of uh, this kind of, or this nature of, uh, uh, processes. Uh, and then the last one, continuous in manufacturing, is extremely high volume and a low variety, uh, and that is often a single uh, product, for example, to be produced uh, non-stop. Uh, it can be very high refinery production, and they keep a set standards to repeat the product, high capital intensive, and they can be atom atomized even, and few change over may be required uh, during the processes, uh, but difficult and expensive uh, to stop or restart uh, because once it is started, it has to continue for production in order to minimize the cost. Then you look to the servicization, the three key important types uh, from the professional to service shop and mass service. And exactly, we know that each one has the uh, variation because of the variety uh, as well as the volume. So uh, the professional services, let's say a bank, uh, somebody wants to go for um, an inter international uh, business transaction or they want to do a business account for uh, taking a loan for doing a new business, it's quite professional services will be required as compared if you go to the same bank and you just draw, withdraw the cash or deposit money, even it can be done by the ATM machine. So that is mass services can be repeatedly um, carried on with a high volume with very low variation. So the uh, important point that we need to understand why we need process design to minimize the cost and have flexibility because uh, they get the best out of the resources. So we reach to a point where we can see uh, the differentiation between the volume and variety, and then we see the demand and capacity, and then we again depend on the nature of the product or service. So they, there are five important types in the manufacturing, operation, process design, and there are three important categories that we can classify if we do processes for servicization. And then we are looking for the point where we have less process flexibility which is needed uh, with, a, with, a, with a high cost or more process flexibility that is needed with a, again, so high cost from the volume point of view as well as from the variety point of view. And the natural line 
uh, of the fit of the process to volume and variety that going to be characteristic is the need uh, for any organization to get the best out of their uh, available resources and to see uh, where they can meet the point between the uh, volume as well as the variety and they reach to the point where they can minimize their cost and they can produce the product uh, with the uh, best use of their resources. So that is the deviation cost, uh, which can be sometimes the, the cost deviation is simply defined as a difference between the final cost of the uh, project or the product and the contrast among without any changes to the original, uh, co uh, uh, original outcome uh, from the project. To calculate uh, the, um, let's say, deviation cost and how to make it uh, with the flexibility, uh, we can calculate the average mean price from the number of periods or observations that the process uh, which can uh, produce a product or offer services or the services carried on. Then we try to determine each period deviation. Uh, we take the average, uh, we sequence each period deviation, sum the sequence deviation together and divide the sum by the number of the ob number of observation and we get a number which we believe is more appropriate to that is needed for high cost to ensure bring efficiency and effectiveness with the flexible approach for a standard deviation of the cost. We try to make sure that the mapping for process is in place because the process mapping uh, is where we need to uh, see how different activities can be performed. If it is, let's say, manufacturing, how the raw material will be uh, collected or received or delivered, how we can keep the inventory, how different production uh, design work can be performed and from, from, from different uh, steps and different processes, how the product will uh, be finished uh, to, to be a finished product without any defect or error to reach to the customer. So that is more important that how we do the uh, mapping for the process. So the process map is a planning and management tool that visually describe the flow of the work. So a process map is also called a flow chart, process uh, flow chart, process chart, functional process chart sometime, or it can also be called, let's say, process model or a workflow diagram. Uh, <coughs> So a process mapping is an important aspect of manufacturing industry. Uh, it is just like a blueprint or, or it's just like a, uh, it's just like a chart which uh, gives the clear identification that how the product can be break down into more movable uh, parts to determine the key area a requirement to fulfill. So we need to understand uh, as an example that the process mapping is a graphical illustration. So for example, business process mapping refers to activities involved in defining what a business in, uh, entity does, which is uh, who is, let's say, responsible for what, uh, to what standard a business processes should be completed, and uh, for example, how the success of business process can be uh, determined. So how you flow uh, the different processes to be in place one after the other in, se other in sequential order or different processes can be carried out in parallel. So this can be some of the symbols uh, uh, as the uh, standard symbols uh, on the industry use uh, and they can be applied to give uh, it just the uh, signs that people can understand what does it mean and you can apply if you want to design a process for the organization then you mean that delays uh, where you have to uh, stop or hold on for a minute or for some time you have to put a sign and uh, how this sign means it's just like the tra uh, the traffic uh, uh, signs on the road you understand uh, what a different sign means to you uh, to understand if the road is uh, no go or one way two way traffic it is exactly the same signal can be or signs or symbols can be applied in the process design within manufacturing or service organization uh, they are just giving a clear understanding for any management uh, to have the analysis of using these processes please carry on your discussion with the article and uh, we will